my name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train. Random Random, as you know, and covered in 17. Perils of Production, two Helical Crystals. Oh, I love those. And a Prism Retrieval. Hmm. We could be pulled in a lot of different ways by this deck and can't trigger an additional time. I mean, you can't turn that down. Hmm. So what if my situation is that I use the Penumbra, the Architect Penumbra in particular, to make space to put more Encant Triggers on the same floor. That's a unique way of uh, getting these clans to synergize with one another. That's a reasonable approach. That armor shouldn't be intimidating at all. They don't get hasted to the top of the field, so they only... Like, this is going to be four damage if they all get past me, and they're not all going to get past me. For right now, though, I have no... Hmm. For right now, though, I have no incant triggers. Yeah, I'm going to take two Ember Drain there just so they can get the 50 gold. That's worth. Okay, let's go. Morsel Jeweler there. Perils of Production on you. Then I can... Prism Retrieval to get a much larger Train Steward, which I can't actually fit in that space anymore, so I've got to wait until it does. Take four damage there. We took seven damage there for a unit draft. Very, very happy with that. Very happy. And Tumbra Assault versus Prismal Dust versus Perils of Production. I like Antumbra Assault. You know, more directed damage to a backline. I also like Energy Siphon more now with the Helical Crystals. Ooh, Titan Sentry. Um, since I'm going for Encants, I really feel like I should wait for Encants. How long do I even have to wait for Encants, though? Merchant of Steel is a Stygian banner. That could be an Encant pretty easily. Okay. I'll turn those down and look for it. Come on, Encant. There we go. Siren of the Seal, Lodestone Totem. I mean, if we're double triggering in cants. I... The annoying thing is I really, really, really want the Siren of the Sea. But I feel like a rare card <clears throat> that's double triggering sap you can't turn it down. I mean, it's also going to encant armor on itself now. Which is great, so it doesn't get swept. Start a battle enemy in superior each floor, that's fine. We're going to get the lodestone totem and pop it on the top floor. As long as we cast one spell with it, we should be totally fine. Because we'll also put the penumbra up there. Yeah, that'll do. Penumbra, lodestone totem, Elko Crystallis. And now there's no damage going to the top floor. Well, not really. Using the pie to kill them all. Okay. Uh, let's 
take out that one. Just trying to draw out the cards that aren't going to be useful. Go for uh, life seal. Seems like it'll be the most impactful here. Got him. Let me find some uh, some encant minions, please. Uh, cannibalize actually isn't that bad. Gives us the ability to kill the penumbra if we need to. Uh. I mean, if I need it dead, I can just leave it out front. That's if it needs to make space for more encant triggers to get sat on the same floor. The rest of those aren't really appealing, though. Helical Crystallis is pretty much always appealing. I just like it a lot. Oh, the numbers. I mean, Stygian Unit as well as a Merchant of Magic. Fine. Still looking for encant triggers. There we go. The Guard of the Unnamed is a great frontliner for that. Double stack on an energy siphon is also really good. Love a good increase in damage to the Helical Chrysalis, but I think the first one has to go to the Entumbra Assault. And then I'll decrease the cost of a Helical Crystallis. Reroll. Consume removal. No, don't care about that there at all. There we go. Just trying to, across the board, increase the quality of all of the Helicals there. Three Dante's Candle, get something later. Do I want a Dante in this build? I think so. I think Dante would be a great second floor for us. I also think I'm quite likely to dilute the deck. So maybe I don't have so much problem with having a bunch of Dante's Candles in the deck. Interestingly, I think all of my operations happen on the top floor. Still. Because right now, I still don't deal that much damage. But what I can do... One sec. Uh, I should have played that. Oops. But what I can do is sap the ever-loving heck out of anything that tries to go to that top floor. And then just let it die to the pyre. Maybe I dupe the lodestone totem? Yeah, there's a hellbunt on the same side as a umbra banner in the next area. I can just dupe the lodestone totem and then all I do is guard the unnamed two lodestone totems, send people up to the top floor with no damage to die to the pyre. Is that a build? I know I've done something similar before, but it didn't work out. Dude, not even slightly. <laughs> How many spells would I have to even cast before that would actually be viable against like a boss? I wonder. It seems like that amount yeah, is gonna be more than I can muster. What if I do it again? I'm just putting six stacks on everyone. Mm. I need to find more spells. I think. More access to spells, please.
I mean, also increasing the damage of the Titan Sentry here actually seems very reasonable. Harness the Titan. Enhance all spells in hand with plus five magic power. I like it. It gives us a clear direction for where we want our spells to go as well. And I don't really care about the Shade Splitters anymore anyways. Yeah. No, thank you. I'm done with that. We are going to want extra draw. Probably going to want that two times, actually. So the minion upgrades would be extra health on Lodestone, extra damage and extra health on the Guard of the Unnamed. They're not super impactful, whereas duping something and removing two cards from the deck is pretty impactful right now. We can at least play the train stewards out on the bottom lines. So they'll stop being in hand and chunking up the, the harness. The perils of production aren't great here either, to be honest. Okay, let's dupe the Lodestone Totem. Even more capacity, thank you. That's fine. We still set up on the top floor. I think we can still do this with the two Lodestone Totems in particular. The units, the enemy units do get stronger as they ascend up here, which uh, is certainly an annoyance. I just don't think it's going to actually prevent us from being able to do anything. Shame I can't hit that collector in the back line. It's also worth noting that this is a very slow setup for us because each of these Lodestone Totems count as banner units despite being totems. They are an exemption to the totems don't count as units rule because you find them where you find normal units rather than finding them where you find normal spells. It, those rules are a little, a, a little messy. I would like if they were clarified somewhere. But it does mean that I might have to wait up to three hands before I get my Guard of the Unnamed. But that does also mean that I can set up on the top floor without much problem. Pop down a train steward and then kill it, just to get the morsels. Then play a health morsel. Do the perils of production. The health of Crystallis as well. Great. Oh, God. So much sap. Uh, all right. Let's actually give you the spell weakness just in case. Because I know that I'm not going to need all of these frozen lances up here. In fact, I probably only need one of them. We already have this. Love it. Alright. How this... How much can we have this? How this can we have, please? Okay, we're going to ultimately heal out of this fight. It's going to be a pretty slow one. Honestly, the 50 damage of the Penumbra in the back line might be enough for it to be a uh, kind of damage dealer while all this happens. Uh, I'd like the extra energy, but I can't set it up. 
Guardian Stone, again, would be nice, but it takes up a space where I probably end up wanting to put a Lodestone instead. Especially now the Lodestones give themselves armor. Hey, Dante. So we now get Dante the Deceptive, plus two magic power for every black card in your deck, which is plus eight for me. And then when played, gain a stack of multi-strike for every black card in your deck. So now we have a, another good uh, minion target upgrade. Minion upgrade target is uh, what I meant to say. Just completely averted it. Another lodestone totem on the other side. Heck yeah, let's do it. 50% chance to apply spell weakness whenever an enemy unit enters your train. Sure, Tethys. Thank you. Let's go for duping lodestone. Top floor just got even harder to set up, but we, we, we're going to need to start focusing on cutting cards out of the deck. But we always need to start focusing on that at some point, don't we? In all our lives, don't we all come to a point where we need to stop focusing on specifically allowing the deck to be large? No, that's not a relatable thing. Okay, fair enough. Sorry, my bad. I mean, didn't find it. We find it this turn though, but hopefully we find a couple spells. Otherwise, yeah, life gets real hard. Spells. We do need more spells in the deck to dilute this out. I need to I need to be focusing on picking up more of them, I think. Still. Uh, Dante the Deceptive isn't protected by anything here. Which admittedly does make sense. Um, honestly, I don't think Dante is how we win here. I think having Dante in the deck is going to dilute the deck from the other things right now. Specifically in this fight, I'm talking about. I just don't think Dante is going to contribute that much to this fight. More spell weakness, and then you've got negative 12 on top of what's your base? 12? Okay, so I do need to cast more spells if I actually don't want you to damage my higher. Maybe running a second floor was a bad idea here. Starting to feel very not necessary. Okay. Yeah, I basically just have to make sure that I always have our spell to cast when they get to the top floor. Maybe I'm looking for permafrost? I don't know, maybe. It's a weird one. Uh, okay. X uh, Ember Cash is so good here. It's so many encant triggers and it gives you so much energy. Thank you. Uh, permafrost applies silence to enemy units or consume apply. Hmm. I like silence to enemy units and it's permafrost consumed so I can just hold it for the right wave. Okay, so the minion upgrades. Do we care about any of them as much right now? Well, we do care about going for the unstable vortex for the double removal. Large stone on Dante is a huge upgrade. 
monumental upgrade. Guarding our name very quickly gets too big to actually handle. No, I should still give it some health. Reroll. Fine. I'll give you health as well. Okay. It's fine. And now I think we actually go very, very ham on the removals. I like the Shade Splitters exclusively because they are spells in this deck right now, but I would like to get rid of them more. Two Train Stewards. Getting rid of these Train Stewards means the Prism Retrieval is now actually always going to fetch a usable unit for me. So it's like a bad Channel Heart, but since I have so many units... Channel Heart? Uh, is it called Channel Heart? Channel Song. It's a bad channel song. But sometimes you need a bad channel song when you have this many units in your deck and it's very important that you get early, uh, all of them early on. At least we made it past Deadless. How about that? First run in four to make it past Deadless. Good lord. Oof. That was a rough episode. All of them were so promising in different ways as well, though. Ah, well. What you can do is pick yourself up, move yourself on. I'm gonna go. God. Loads. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Forgot that I have to play the capacity giving one first if I want to be able to use all the capacity. Alright. It is Penumbra first. Then Guardian Name, then a Lodestone Totem. Then I will Prism Retrieval in order to get another Lodestone Totem out. So now I only have one Lodestone Totem to draw next turn. Now all of our... Uh, all of them. Our Shade Splitters go down here on the bottom line. As many of them as we may end up having to have. It's not that many. Tumbra Assault will help. Okay. I do, however, have to throw away the Entumbra. Dante's real good here. Like, quick would be a great modifier. Oh, uh, no, wait, hang on. We just gave you double upgrades. We can't give you any more upgrades now. Literally not possible. Right. I missed an encant trigger there on the top floor, and that was my bad. Dante second line here. He's working out well enough. Hmm. Definitely get rid of that. Save some health here on the midline, I think. We have enough sap on Fell that the Dante actually kills it. I'm very, very surprised by that. Huh. I mean, I guess it is a 10 damage multi-striker, so 
makes sense, but still, wild. Uh, no, none of those are actually good contributions to this build, but the extra draw definitely is. Okay. Double removal is on the side of the Merchant of Trinkets, but the Forgotten Boons has the ability to make our Helical Crystallis is cheaper. As well as give hold over to embrace the Titan. You consume cost plus one. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Magic power plus ten. Pop that on you, and then Yeah, I'll reroll. Double stack? Missed out on double stack for anything? No, nothing would have uh, been applicable for a double stack here. Great. Lower the cost of a Helical Crystallis. And then... Do I consume a Frozen Lance? No, I don't want them consuming. Then they undilute the deck. Ah, uh, deal two damage to a reanimate unit when a morsel is eaten. That's not going to trigger very commonly for us at all. I will take the money there. So I gave 10 health for 25 gold. It's not a great trade, but there are a fair few cases where I would do that, sure. Mmm. This is bad. Giving them more spikes is, uh, is, is a problem. Because then they deal, like, a lot of damage to our Pyre if we get the Pyre to kill them. The thing is, I don't think the Pyre kills them anymore. I think we might be done with the Pyre killing. All right, I'm gambling that I'm drawing Dante next turn. Got him. Dante's not going to survive here. Dante is very much just like the the solution in the interim for us. Okay. We need to get more of these spell casts on the top floor, but it's really hard to do that. Just gotta get that armor. Okay, now I feel a lot better. Should be enough here, and in fact, is it? It is! Great! And then another double stack on you. Throw a big torch, I guess. And she'll get the Dante's candle away. Definitely use the Entumbra Assault here to take out the actual damaging unit. Life still to really not matter here, so we'll get the damage. We're taking very little damage, but we're killing not both of them yet. Dang. Fine. I gotta do that so we can kill both of them so we don't take the damage to the spikes as it goes to the next floor. So obviously here I'm looking for a way to kill the winged conduit in the back line.
I will, however, silence your ability to gain damage when hit. And then cast a couple more spells on this top floor before this happens. Thank you, Excavated Embers, for being exactly right on time to demonstrate why I wanted you in this deck. Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter again. And... Uh, yeah, you're not gonna ever damage me. Sorry, bud. <laughs> That's just not happening. <laughs> Woo. Love it. I could get another lodestone totem, by the way. I, I, I actually could. Uh, do I run out of energy a lot of I think I do run out of energy on enough turns to take that, uh, the engine upgrade, though. We're not gonna have excavated embers constantly in hand. The dupe is on the same side as spell up. There aren't that many minion upgrades I want anymore. Sure. Look at the merchant trinkets first. Ooh, whenever an enemy dies each turn, add two morsels in. First morsel you draw one. No, don't want these anymore. So I'll tell you what the big problem is, and it's that there are going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of scourges, scourges, sorry, blights. No, blights are these. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of scourges being put in my deck by the enemies on the bottom floor. And that's going to hurt a lot. And I can't set up on the bottom floor, easily at least. Can I set up on the bottom floor? It really depends on whether or not I draw the Guard of the Unnamed early, basically. Yeah, double stack doesn't really have a good effect. Fine. Uh, let's look at the morsels, because none of these really help. I mean, I just gain negative one. Fine, I'll take that. Spells get an extra upgrade slot would be nice, but just a little too late. Also, I don't think it would have necessarily been ridiculous for us. Okay. Decrease your cost as well, and then I need the ability to kill backliners more commonly. Maybe the way we're going to achieve that is by duping another Entumbra Morsel. Uh, Entumbra Assault, rather. That might actually have to be it. I don't like that solution, but that does seem like the best solution that I have access to right now. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Well, there's the first one. You know, the harshest thing that I have to do here is burn a helical chrysalis. But it looks like this might solve uh, approximately all of our problems. Well, shade split. Should have done that on bottom floor, as you might imagine. Then, uh, uh. 
looking for Dante this turn. Hello, Dante this turn. Just to catch the stragglers. I don't like that the Light Wings has gotten up here. Do I let you deal 11 damage so that I can put down the Lodestone Totem on the bottom floor? I think I have to. I'm also sapping these units instead of before they go to the Pyre now. I'm sapping them before they go to Dante so they don't kill Dante. Then, let's go Frozen. Go into a Helicopter Crystallis. None of them purge, but I will Dante's Candle and then get that out. Start off with a Frozen Lance so that I can keep the Harness of the Titan here. Do have to Entumber Assault the backline again, just to prevent another one of these uh, Scourges. Specifically, we no longer need to rely on the top because the Penumbra in the backline is 100 damage. So if we have enough armor and enough sap, this line takes care of it without having to get people to go to the Pyre afterwards. Which uh, just really changed everything about. So we just cast a spell that was going to consume anyway. In order to take down the first consumption from Seraph the Diligent. That's what I was talking about earlier, saying that Excavated Ember is really good against the Seraph the Diligent here. We're about to get a lot of sap on the Seraph. Just from this round. Oh, it's so good. And then give you a couple of magma morsels to work with and even throw one down on the bottom line. Yeah, pretty sure this one's a win for us. Looking a heck of a lot like one. And if we throw out a Elko Crystallis here. Final two Magma Morsels. Uh, magma Morsels. Final two Morsels. One Magma, one and, uh, and Sombra. And then we can just watch the Seraph not be able to do anything here the entire time. I'm glad I went for the Lodestone early and I went for the stacking Lodestone saps. Because... As much as I would have liked to do the Siren of the Sea and then maybe put two Sirens of the Sea on the same field and then just have them grow really quickly, possibly give them multi-strike or something like that. As much as I would like to do that, this is way more interesting. Having a boss that just does nothing to you the entire time and waits for you to kill it. Love that right there. All right. Covenant rank 18. Now merchant goods cost 20% more, making our upgrades much harder to get. We got prison retrieval upgraded. Nice. Now I never have to take it again. Hell yeah. <laughs> I seriously don't like prison retrieval. For the moment though, my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game. has been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we will see you next time.